Hello Bloomington, I'm Mayor Tim Bussey and this is the Council Minute for the week of May 16th. Two topics for today, both about essential services in the city. The Bloomington Fire Department and the Bloomington Public Works Department. For 75 years, the Bloomington Fire Department has provided the residents of Bloomington with outstanding fire protection. In fact, in the last community survey, 97% of residents rated Bloomington Fire as excellent or good. Respect and appreciation for the fire department is deeply embedded in this community, and Chief Yuli Seal is a Bloomington institution. Let's face it, everybody loves the fire department, and that gratitude and admiration is well deserved. Back in 2019, the city brought in an outside firm to do a complete review of our fire services. We've done similar reviews of other city departments like public health and fleet services, and those evaluations have given the city a better understanding about the work being done, priorities for the future, and challenges and opportunities. The review of the fire department resulted in a number of recommendations, including things like updating deployment policies and response time standards, reworking hazardous materials response protocols, and right-sizing our fire truck fleet. Some of the most important observations and recommendations were related to the staffing model that Bloomington uses to staff the department. For decades, Bloomington took pride in the fact that a city of this size was served by a paid on-call fire department. It's similar to a volunteer fire department, but they actually haven't been volunteers for years. In recent years, it has become abundantly clear that staffing model needs to change. The external review urged the city to move to a hybrid model of full-time and paid on-call firefighters and to increase the number of command staff, and Bloomington has done that. But as we heard Monday night from Chief Seal, the Bloomington Fire Department still faces some significant staffing issues, and the time has come to have a serious city discussion about the best way to move forward. According to Chief Seal, the ideal number of active firefighters in a paid on-call model is 155. Currently, we have 91 active firefighters. If you add in the seven command staff members, that number is 98. Quick math tells me that the Bloomington Fire Department is short about one-third of the desired number of firefighters. And in reality, we haven't been close to full staffing in nearly 20 years. This is a real issue. And I want to be perfectly clear here, this doesn't in any way reflect on the Bloomington Fire Department. The world is different than it was 30 or 40 years ago. It's hard to be a firefighter. There are significant time demands, there is an intense amount of training, especially in the first 18 months on the job. It is a tough job, and as a result, it's very difficult to recruit paid on-call firefighters. And not just in Bloomington. Recruiting and retaining paid on-call or even career firefighters is a challenge across Minnesota and across the nation. The lack of active firefighters is having a clear impact on response times. The chief offered up a couple of examples. When a call comes in, any type of call, the fire department's stated goal is to have three firefighters on scene within seven minutes and 30 seconds. In 2018 and 2019, it took nine minutes and 17 seconds. In 2020 and 2021, it took 11 minutes and 30 seconds to get three firefighters on the scene of a call. Another example, when there's a fire in a small or a medium-sized home, the goal is that 90% of the time, there will be 15 firefighters on scene within 11 minutes and 30 seconds. With the current staffing shortages, getting 15 firefighters on scene within 11 minutes and 30 seconds only happens 27% of the time. Now, Bloomington Fire certainly responds to and puts out all structure fires, but the response doesn't meet the department goals. One final example the chief offered on Monday night. When a truck goes out on a call, the goal is to have at least three firefighters on that rig. Of course, that's not ideal, more is certainly better, but in a pinch, trucks can deploy with only one or two firefighters. In 2015, a fire truck rolled staffed with only one or two firefighters 222 times. And 52 times, a truck assigned to a call was unable to respond due to lack of staff. Chief Seal made the point that he was unhappy with those numbers all the way back in 2015. Now jump ahead six years. In 2021, a Bloomington fire truck went out staffed with only one or two firefighters 1,333 times. And a truck assigned to a call was unable to respond due to lack of staff 586 times. Once again, 
All calls were responded to. No calls went unanswered. And I'll repeat myself. These examples aren't in any way an indictment of the men and women who work bravely and tirelessly as part of the Bloomington Fire Department. The point of these examples is that the current staffing model is not working. So what to do? On Monday night, Chief Seal brought forward both short and long-term solutions. In the short term, meaning this summer, the Chief plans to add four full-time firefighter slash fire inspectors. The addition won't solve the current crew shortages, but it will help. And the additional inspector capacity will help address a sizable backlog of code inspection needs. The cost for four full-timers for the rest of this year will be about $210,000. And those funds will come from an internal reallocation of existing dollars within the fire department budget. For a long-term solution, the chief recommended a plan that would create a hybrid model for the department, 75 full-time firefighters and 60 paid on-call firefighters. The plan would be to hire six full-time firefighters per year over the next 10 years while maintaining a crew of 60 paid on-call firefighters. There is no question that moving to this hybrid model will have an impact on the city property tax levy. The annual cost of adding six firefighters per year would mean an approximate 1% increase to the overall property tax levy each year. So in 2023, that would mean an additional $660,000. In 2024, almost $700,000. 2025, $734,000 and so on. It would require that type of investment. One possible bit of financial help, staff has an application in for a federal SAFER grant. And SAFER stands for Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response. The SAFER grant would fund 18 full-time firefighters for three years, 2023 through 2025. Now, SAFER is a competitive grant program, and as I said, the grant application is in. We could hear as early as July or, frankly, as late as November if we receive the grant. So we'll be working through a variety of options as we develop the 2023 budget. Two related side notes. Full-time firefighters require a different type of fire station. We need a place to house them while they're on duty. The new fire stations we have planned or have recently constructed, like fire station number three, have those facilities. Housing or sleeping quarters were already planned for new fire stations to accommodate firefighters at times when they're asked to spend the night at the fire station, like when there's a blizzard on the way or during a major event like the Republican National Convention a few years back. The current solution when we ask firefighters to spend the night is to set up cots between the trucks, and that doesn't seem like a good solution to me. It's also worth pointing out that Bloomington's current fire department staffing model is an outlier in the metro area. Richfield, Edina, St. Louis Park, Burnsville, Egan, Brooklyn Park, Woodbury, Minneapolis, and St. Paul, they all employ full-time fire department. And neighboring cities, including Eden Prairie, Invergrove Heights, Apple Valley, Savage, Shakopee, and Minnetonka, they all have a hybrid model similar to the one that we're considering here in Bloomington. The bottom line is that this will be an important part of our budget discussion, both for 2023 and beyond. And I can assure you, it will be a community-wide discussion. Be on the lookout for more information and for opportunities to participate. And finally today, on Monday night, I read a proclamation declaring this week as Public Works Week here in the city of Bloomington. From plowing and sweeping the streets, to mowing and maintaining the parks, to making sure that when you turn on the faucet, the best tasting water in Minnesota flows out, our public works staff does outstanding work. If you see them out and about working in the city, be sure to say thank you to them. If you see them rolling past in a city truck, give them a wave or a big thumbs up. Let them know that we all fully understand and appreciate that the public works services they provide are an essential part of our everyday lives. Thanks, public works staff. That will do it for today. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, stay safe, Bloomington.